What is sensory processing disorder? To answer that question, let's first define sensory processing, which is how the nervous system receives signals from the senses and converts those signals into physical and behavioral responses. The senses include the five that are commonly known. Less well-known, but still extremely important are proprioception, which is the perception of body position, vestibular, which maintains balance and body posture, kinesthesia, which perceives the body's movement through space, and interoception, the sense related to what's going on inside the body, including hunger, satiation, thirst, and temperature. Sensory processing disorder is the inability to use information received through the senses to function smoothly in life. For those with sensory processing disorder, sensory information gets to the brain, but does not get organized into appropriate responses. 5 to 15 percent of children have sensory processing difficulties that are so serious that they need help to handle them. There are three types of sensory processing disorders, each with its own features. The types are sensory modulation disorder, sensory discrimination disorder, and sensory-based motor disorder. Let's go deeper into each of these three types, starting with sensory modulation disorder, which actually takes three forms. Over-responsive individuals experience sensory information that is so intense that it overwhelms them. Noises may be too loud, tastes or smells too intense, textures or temperatures too uncomfortable. They may respond to this overstimulation by avoiding sensations or by complaining and becoming irritable. In contrast, under-responsive individuals are so loosely connected to sensory experience that they may seem unaware of touch, movement, smells, or sounds. Lastly, sensory seekers seem to crave input. They may chew on things, welcome loud noises, including their own voices, and really soak in physical sensations like hugs. They may be drawn to intense sights, such as fast-moving objects or bright light. Now let's take a look at the second type of sensory processing disorder. Sensory discrimination disorder has many symptoms, such as poor body awareness, including not being aware when touched, difficulty processing pain and temperature, both inside and outside the body, being confused by the sensations of falling and turning, problematic physical coordination, or being klutzy, having a hard time moving smoothly, Struggling with visual tasks like confusing differences in pictures, faces, words, and objects, and trouble distinguishing sounds, smells, and tastes. Finally, let's go to the third type of sensory processing disorder. With postural disorder, muscle tone may be either tense or loose and floppy. Balance can be an issue, as can using both sides of the body for activities like catching and climbing. Postural disorder can lead to not having a dominant hand, and crossing the midline or using the opposite line of the body can be challenging. Dyspraxia means trouble with movement, including when planning is involved. Symptoms include poor coordination and clumsiness, difficulty with tasks like drawing, writing, buttoning, using eating utensils, and tying shoelaces, trouble with visual tracking, and problems chewing or swallowing. Again, these are the three types of sensory processing disorders. An important consideration is that sensory processing disorders tend to run with other problems that range from difficulty self-regulating to emotional issues. Those with sensory processing disorders may have other diagnoses, including ADHD, autism, and anxiety. How are sensory processing disorders treated? Numerous types of therapies can help, including occupational therapy and physical therapy. A number of approaches can be used, including adjusting the child's sensory diet or what types of sensory inputs the child gets on a regular basis. 
How can schools help with sensory processing disorders? Knowing the type and nature of a student's disorder is critical because the needs of someone with over-responsive sensory modulation, for example, will be different than those of a sensory seeker or someone with poor sensory discrimination or apraxia. Educators should be aware of the sensory demands being placed on students, including lighting and odors. Give kids heads up when sensory overload is coming at them, such as chaotic and loud transitions between classes. Some students will need aspects of a sensory diet, such as allowing breaks, walks, and physical activity. Be flexible about what kids with sensory issues are required to do. 504 plans, or individualized education plans, may be necessary so that everyone is on the same page. Educators can make tools available to support students with sensory processing disorders, such as fidget objects, earphones, and calming music or nature sounds, objects appropriate for chewing, material to help with visual discrimination, like highlighting strips or colored overlays, detailed schedules and timers, and weighted blankets. Many accommodations are possible, such as strategically placing a student in the classroom space. Some accommodations also granted for students with ADHD may be helpful, such as reducing distractions and providing support for organization. Instructional accommodations might be necessary. For example, Students with sensory processing disorders are often running on fumes by the end of the day, so they should be taught difficult material earlier when they have more energy for thinking and learning. Some assignments may need to be shortened or the format modified to give them the opportunity to do their best work. What is sensory processing disorder? A condition that can significantly affect a student's experience at school as well as general quality of life. Fortunately, much can be done to help students who have this disorder, and it starts with understanding it. For more practical psychology to enhance your life, check out psychbites.com.